Politico managed to score, and I use the word score charitably, an interview with Senator Kirsten Sinema. And this interview, reading this, made me want to bang my head against the desk. And not necessarily for the reason that you're thinking, because of course, Kirsten Sinema is awful and insufferable. I mean, she is a demon, basically. But it's the way that they frame this that really rubbed me the wrong way. So uh, in the first portion, uh, we're just getting to know Kirsten Cinema, and here's what the authors write. In a 35-minute interview in her miniature pink-hued Capitol hideaway office, Cinema dressed down Democratic leadership for setting expectations too high. She also defended the right of her critics to protest her, but not to follow her into a bathroom and unfairly and illegally victimize the students she teaches at Arizona State. Cinema also revealed why she's consistently spotted on the floor chatting with GOP leader McConnell. He has a dry sense of humor. It's underrated. <coughs> I want to kill myself after reading that. In Roblox, of course. Um, that, that was bad. That was genuinely bad. Uh, okay. So we're just one paragraph in, and already I want to rip my eyeballs off and uh, and eat them. So uh, rip them out, I guess that makes more sense. But anyways, um, I just this line really stood out to me. Cinema dressed down Democratic leadership for setting expectations too high. The Democratic Party leadership she thinks is setting expectations too high. <laughs> so we can't get any cancellation of student loan debt we can't get medicare for all but we can't even get a public option at this point or a semi-public option we get a little bit more money for subsidies for the affordable care act we can't get marijuana legalized recreationally nationwide we can't get basically anything that we wanted and build back better in fact the things that were good that are still in it have been watered down to oblivion and yet, the Democratic Party, the corporate Democratic Party leadership is setting expectations too high. I mean, look, when it comes to the Democratic Party, my expectations are very low. I mean, they're below the floor. They're reaching the Earth's core low. But for her to say that they're setting expectations too high, this isn't just a lie. She's stupid for even saying that. That's genuinely a low IQ thing to say. This is, this is galaxy brain bullshit. It's genuinely stupid. But she explains herself here. She says, you're either honest or you're not honest. So just tell the truth and be honest and deliver that which you can deliver, Cinema said. There's this growing trend of people in both political parties who promise things that cannot be delivered in order to get the short-term political gain. And I believe that it damages the long-term health of our democracy. Oh, is that so? Tell me specifically what you think the Democratic Party is overpromising in particular because what they're essentially promising is crumbs. So what's less than crumbs? Like, are you going to cut each individual crumb in half? I just, I, I don't know what she's saying here. She's just virtue signaling about how she's like the more realistic person here when you're not, you're not more realistic. What crumbs the Democratic Party even considered giving us, you weren't okay with that. So go fuck yourself, Kirsten Cinema, because what you're saying is stupid. Now, uh, she responded to critics. Um, note the language here as we're reading through her responses, because you can tell that the Politico writers, they were trying to create a puff piece. So it's a rare retort to cinema's opponents. She's responded to most criticism with silence, whether it's jabs that she's a Republican or that she's imposing tyranny on Democrats. And on policy, the first term senator has remained almost completely quiet during breakneck negotiations to finish Biden's agenda. Still, cinema laid out some of her thinking, explaining that she generally supports adding paid leave to the Democrats' social spending bill, but not raising tax rates on corporations and some high income earners saying she will not support tax policies that have a negative impact on our economic climate. And unlike her colleague, Senator Joe Manchin, she views the bill's climate provisions as the most important part of what is under discussion. So the idea is that, you know, she's above the fray. She doesn't respond to criticism. And contrary to popular belief, she actually does care about climate change. It's just that, you know, when we see what she's doing, uh, her actions indicate otherwise but i mean they're telling us that she actually does think it's the most important part okay then pass the fucking bill support the bill you are doing everything in your power to obstruct 
Build Back Better. And you're going to claim that you actually care about climate change? I mean, maybe she cares a little bit, but the extent to which she does care, I mean, it's 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 not enough. It's insufficient because what's in Build Back Better isn't going to save the planet from climate apocalypse. So everything she's saying here, it just it comes off as so disingenuous. And the way that the authors are framing it is they want us to believe that she's actually not the demon that we all see her as publicly. And speaking of what's public and what's not public, she talks about why she refuses to, quote, negotiate publicly. And this is why she basically just, uh, you know, remains silent, unlike everyone else in Congress. If you're in the middle of negotiating things that are delicate or difficult, doing it in good faith directly with each other is the best way to get an outcome, Cinema said just a few minutes after returning from Biden's signing ceremony. I'm still in the process of negotiating the second provision of the president's agenda, and I don't negotiate in the press. Shut the fuck up! Okay, every time that she says this, it makes me irate. Irrationally so. Like, it shouldn't make me that mad. But negotiating in the press would be uh, you going on, I don't know, CNN and saying, hey, Biden, let's bring that uh, salt cap increase up. Let's 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 go from uh, 10,000 to 80,000. That would be you negotiating in the press. But just stating your position or signaling what you may or may not support, that's not negotiating with the press. And it's a cop out. Um, but really, I actually, as insufferable as Kirsten Sinema was throughout the course of this interview, I don't find what she said the most egregious because I find her predictably insufferable and stupid and, you know, vacuous. But it's the authors of this article who I really take issue with. So uh, they go on to explain how she has a unique political style that might actually pay off. And, you know, you might not like her, but she actually has a lot of friends in Congress. Even Elizabeth Warren said something nice about her. Elizabeth Warren said that she's, quote, very focused who cares what elizabeth warren said i don't care why are you trying to do a puff piece for somebody who is obstructing her entire party's agenda you would think that the mainstream media knowing their bias towards sensationalism would try to frame this as her versus her party but instead they are doing damage control for kirsten cinema and that's just that's stupid and at the time that i record this this article this interview is the most read piece on politico so now thousands, if not millions of Politico readers are going to read this interview and they're going to think, wow, you know, I had this um, really negative perception of Kirsten Cinema, but according to Politico, according to this piece, she's not that bad. You know, she's just a little bit different. You know, she's quirky. She has an unorthodox negotiating style, but she's just a unique politician and she's thinking outside the box and maybe I can understand her since she's telling me all this. But they're not asking any hard-hitting questions they're not challenging her in this interview all they're doing is propaganda they're cleaning up after she made a mess of her own political career and the worst thing the elephant in the room that was not addressed is her corruption so they made it seem as if her actions were guided exclusively by you know this strict adherence to principle but she gutted the drug pricing provision of build back better after raking in hundreds of thousands of dollars from the pharmaceutical industry and as the daily post reports this industry has spent more than a million dollars on her behalf and if you think that's a lot of money for one industry to spend well it pales in comparison to how much money they saved by backing corporate democrats like kirsten cinema so as the daily poster reports the lobbying and advertising campaign against the drug pricing plan saved them nearly half a trillion dollars that is quite the return on investment politico didn't bother to ask kirsten cinema about that rather they claimed that her actions were the result of principle or her just being unique and quirky when in actuality this is a conflict of interest this is legalized bribes that she took and that's what influenced her actions how could you spend 35 minutes scoring this interview with her and you don't ask that question you don't bring it up once i mean this is journalistic malpractice you get the chance to speak with kirsten cinema and you don't even ask about the money she's taken from the pharmaceutical industry or any money she's taken it's truly uh, absurd and look, it is the case that I believe mostly right-wing media is contributing more and more to the dumb fuckification of America. But things like this that are Fox News light, albeit for a Democrat, it doesn't help. It makes people more stupid. It makes them less informed because when people are learning about Kirsten Sinema's motivations, nothing matters except for 
the political contributions that she's taken. Her actions aren't driven by her quirky personality or unique negotiating style. Her actions exclusively are the result of corruption. And maybe if media outlets actually took the time to spotlight the corruption in our political system, maybe it wouldn't be as bad. But since the media isn't doing their job, politicians who are shamelessly corrupt like Kirsten Cinema, to the extent that they're basically flaunting it in our faces, get to get away with it. They get a free pass. It's, it's really infuriating.